For real. Mm -hmm. Good morning, everyone. We'd like to welcome you to another a viral worship service of the South County Charge here on another beautiful day that the Lord has made on uh, April the 19th, 2000. And 20. I, I greet you in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit. I welcome everyone who is with us on Facebook Live. I welcome everyone who is with us uh, on uh, Zoom this morning. Uh, just welcome everybody and, and thank you so very much for, for being a, a part of the service. Um, I, prayerfully, you're getting used to doing this. Uh, I am getting used to this a, a little bit, <laughs> but uh, it's, a, it, it's never uh, the easiest thing. Uh, to do with all the various technology things that we have going on, but um, but God is good and worthy to be praised, and this is uh, becoming what we will have to do uh, for the next uh, little while. I know everyone is anxious to, to get back together and have church be the way that it used to be, but that's going to be a while. Uh, and so as we watch um, all the things that are going on with the pandemic, uh, we will just um, uh, continue to be the church. Um, I, I saw a great a meme on Facebook uh, where the, the devil was talking to Jesus and said, I closed down the church. And Jesus said, no, you just helped me put church in everybody's house. And so that's what we have now. We have church in everybody's house. We have church in everybody's heart. Uh, I, I pray that uh, we are getting people together in our homes on these Sunday mornings. Um, I, I thank uh, Sister Maxine who had a, a, a watch party. Uh, we got a lot of people together uh, to watch our services. And so we're just going to continue to do what we've been called to do because God is great and worthy to be praised. Um, I also want you to know that uh, everybody's on mute right now. So um, hopefully that you can hear me. Amen. Um, one of the things that, that I really enjoy and, I, and one of the things that First Lady, most First Lady and Keisha can see is when you put comments in. Um, if you're on Facebook Live, that helps us to, to know what's going on. So that we can, if there's any technical problems, we can address those. And if you're just having a good time with the service, we appreciate all the comments. So keep them coming, amen, because God is good and worthy to be praised. Um, as we forward into this week, I, I want you to know that um, as far as I know, so this is what I have been told, we have had in our congregations at least three people who have tested positive to COVID-19. Uh, everybody's okay right now, uh, but we lift up prayer and, and a special prayer for Doll Baby, who is um, in the um, Heritage Harbor um, uh, uh, Rehabilitation Center in, in, in Annapolis. Um, and there's an outbreak going on in there. Uh, she was one of the ones we found out recently um, did have uh, uh, was infected with the um, with the virus, and so uh, we just ask a, a special prayer for her. You know, we're praying for everybody and for those. Uh, the other two who had it, and I, I, they haven't given me permission to give their names, so I'm not going to do that. But they uh, they are they are on the recovering side of it. So God is good all the time. Uh, I would like to thank everyone who has called me to check on me and check on First Lady. Thank you all so very much. We appreciate that. We are doing well. Uh, God is good. Uh, the family is doing well. Everybody is here. So we just thank you for um, for all of the calls and the text and everything else to check on us. Um, letters will be forthcoming um, this week for both the churches. Um, just letters of encouragement and inspiration. And um, also, there's something I want to do. So I'll talk about this a little bit later, probably during the offering, is I want to bless uh, some of the workers at um, either... So we basically have um, two centers we, uh, that, that our people are at, Heritage Harbor and South River Rehabilitation Center. I wanna, I'd want to. i like to do something to bless them, whether we could um, look at doing a special offering so that we could offer a meal to all of the staff, because they're going through in there. I can, I can only imagine it was, um, it was tight and it was, uh, it was a difficult situation before the virus. And now with the virus, I know it's tough. So I want to do something that we as a church can come together and bless some of the workers that are doing some great things in our community and for our people. Uh, so um, we're going to open today. Uh, we're going to we're going to start our service with the opening prayer. And I'm going to bring on um, First Lady Anita, who will be bringing us the opening prayer this morning. Amen. Trey, say amen. As we go to the Lord in prayer, with our hearts and our minds turned towards heaven, let us pray. 
Father God, in the name of Jesus, we are grateful for this time that we have come together. We're grateful, Lord God, in this time of our world history that we are able to come together and pray and praise you even though we are miles apart. If this had happened at another time, the church as we know it would have had to fall apart almost. But because of your great love and concern for us, you gave ideas and innovations to people so that we would, could be able to utilize them in such a time as this and be able, Lord God, to do church and meet together and talk together remotely. And we are grateful. We are grateful, Lord God, that in the midst of all that's going on, you are still sitting high, looking low, and are mindful of us, your creation. We are thankful, Lord God, that you consider, you consider us to be important enough to make us the apple of your eye. You can't look at earth without seeing us. We are grateful. We are thankful, Father God, that in the midst of it all, when doubt and fear and over-concern come upon us, you send us your peace. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And your peace, Lord God, mounts garrison around our hearts. And we are reminded of the greatness of our God, even amid the most difficult times. Lord, we are grateful. Father, we ask your forgiveness because in the midst of all you've done for us, we have not been the people you have called us to be. We have not always remembered our neighbors. We have not always remembered the poor. We have not always remembered those who have less than. We have not always considered other people to be more important than us. Even though your son considered dying on the cross to be more important, Lord God, than staying in heaven so that we might have our salvation. Forgive us, Father, we pray. Lord, we pray for all the world leaders. We pray for the world leaders. We pray for our, our governors. We pray, Lord God, for our mayors. We pray for people who are in charge, Lord God. We pray that you give them wisdom. We pray, Lord God, that they keep us safe in accordance with your will and your way more than they worry about money. Father, we pray right now for all the small businesses. Yes, Lord. Lord, we know that there are many small businesses, particularly here in the Washington, D.C. area, that are around the government buildings. And since we are not there, they are considered non-essential and they have had to close. That means people aren't getting checks. Money isn't coming into the business. And some of them are looking, Lord God, at losing their businesses, even some of them that have been in their families for generations. Father, we ask right now that you mount garrison around their hearts, that you lay your hands upon them, that you give them your peace. Lord, we ask that you would touch the minds of the congressmen and senators, Lord God, and whatever is necessary, do for them, do for the small business owners, Lord God, so that they might keep their businesses and they might be able to do the things you have called them to do as they bless others. Father, we pray for the homeless. It's difficult enough being homeless, Lord God. At least there are people around who can sow into them. But now no one's around. No one's there to sow into them. No one's necessarily there to help them. Father, be with them in the name of Jesus. Father, we ask for this service today that your will be done. And let your kingdom come in each one of our lives in accordance to your will for each one of us. We ask these things in your name and unto your glory. In Christ Jesus' name we pray and say, amen. Amen, amen. Thank you so very much, First Lady. Um, so here's what I'm going to do for just one minute. Um, we're going to pass the peace. So what I want you to do, I've unmuted everybody, so just say, God is blessing my house and just say who you are, all right? Go. Amen.
God is blessing the God is blessing the Wombo's house. Amen. Well, praise the Lord. I'm glad we know that God is still in the blessing business. Amen. 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 God is good. God is good all the time, and all the time is God is good. So we're going to go to our call to worship now. And so, as we have been doing every Sunday since we've started this, um, I need for y'all to remember a very, very short line. All right? And this one shouldn't be difficult for you. The line is, his love endures forever. Amen? Y'all got that? His love Amen. endures forever. All right? Here we go. So when I say people, you will say his, his love, love endures forever. All right. Y'all doing good. Y'all doing good. All right. Make a joyful noise to the Lord all the earth. People. His love endures forever. Serve the Lord with gladness. People. His love endures forever. Come into his presence with singing. People. His love endures forever. Know that the Lord, he is God. People. His love endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord. Bless his name. Serve the Lord with gladness. Even in the worst of times, we have a blessed assurance that people. His love endures forever. Amen. 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 All right, thank you so very much. So, now, if you would, turn to your hymnals <laughs> to page 77, and we're going to do the first verse of How Great Thou Art. Now, I need for y'all to sing loud, because I'm a little bit far away from you, but I need to be able to hear you. Uh, so, y'all should know, y'all should know uh, this song is How Great Thou Art, all right? And so, we're just going to sing the first verse. Um, stand if you are able. No, you don't have to stand. Um, <laughs> Are you ready? Here we go. Oh, Lord, my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the world thy hands have made, I see the stars, I hear to do a lot of work this week and so um, we're going to go uh, into the scripture reading at this time and first lady is going to be reading the scripture so for the bibles for those of you who have your bibles um, we'll be going to jeremiah 32 jeremiah 32 17. 6 through 17 mm -hmm. and we will be reading in the new testament hebrews 13 and 5 so that's jeremiah 32 6 through 17, and Hebrews 13 and 5. Amen. 
If you, if you if you found it, say amen. If you if you haven't found it, say hold on. Jeremiah 32, verses 7 to verses 6 through 17. It is entitled, Jeremiah Buys a Field. Jeremiah said, The word of the Lord came to me. Hanamel, son of Shalom, your uncle is going to come to you and say, Buy my field and Ananoth, because we because as nearest relative it is your right to and duty to buy it. Then, just as the Lord had said, my cousin Hamamel came to me in the courtyard of the garden and said, Buy my field and Anathoth in the territory of Benjamin, since it is your right to redeem it and possess it, buy it for yourself. I knew that this was the word of the Lord, so I bought the field and Anathoth from my cousin Hanamel and weighed out for him 17 shekels of silver. I signed and sealed the deed and had it witnessed and weighed out the silver on the scales. I took the deed of purchase and sealed the sealed copy containing the terms and conditions as well as the unsealed copy. And I gave this deed to Barak, son of Nehai, the son of Mishai, in the presence of my cousin Hanamel, and of the witnesses who had signed the deed and of all the Jews sitting in the courtyard of the guard. In their presence, I gave Barak these instructions. This is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel says. Take these documents, both sealed and unsealed, copies of the deed of purchase, and put them in clay jars so they will last a long time. For this is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel, says. Houses, fields, and vineyards will again be bought in this land. After I had taken the deed of purchase, I prayed to the Lord God. Ah, sovereign Lord, you have made the heavens and the earth by your great power and outstretched arm. Nothing is too hard for you. Hebrews 13 and 5 says, keep your life free from the love of money and be content with what you have. For he has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. And now we will have our hymn of preparation by Julian Womble. One second. Battery, one hundred percent. Connected to iPad two. And now we will have our All hymn. Ending. Our hymn of preparation. One second, technical difficulties. Let me just give you some background into the scripture in Jeremiah. Jeremiah and the children of Israel were about to go into captivity in Babylon under King Nebuchadnezzar. So the fact that God told Jeremiah to buy a field in a land where they were no longer going to be for an unspecified period of time meant that God had intended to bring them back one day. What day? Nobody knew. 
but God's intention was that they would not abandon their promised land. So as we begin to move forward with the sermon after the hymn of preparation, I need you to keep that in your mind that God intention never fails. Battery 100%. Connected to iPad 2. Let's go ahead and do the sound. Okay. Call ended. Mm. Oh, I know where it is. It's because of. Uh, go ahead. Okay. Praise the Lord. So, the song. Maybe it'll be played afterwards. Hmm. Was by Julian was, um, I just can't give up now. Um, it is one of those songs that, in a time like this, many of us are thinking about what, how, how are we gonna get through this? How are we going to deal with all this stuff that's going on? How are we going to contend with the unknowns? We are much like the children of Israel. They knew they had to go into a difficult time. They knew they were going to have to go into Babylon, and they knew what that meant, but they didn't understand that God had an intention to keep them even in the midst of their worst times. So in the midst of it all, God decided he was going to take them into what I call a spring season. You say, well, first lady, what in the world? In our lives and in the lives of our world, in the lives of our country, we go into seasons. The Bible says in Genesis 8.22, as long as the earth endures, there will be seed time and harvest time, spring and summer, winter, fall, heat and cold. As long as the earth endures, there will be seasons. And sometimes when we go into seasons, it is difficult to understand how it is that we're supposed to operate in those seasons. And sometimes they come upon us gradually, like the children of Israel. They knew it was coming. They knew what had happened. They had seen the fallout in Jeremiah 1 through 31. And here they are in 32, knowing what's about to take over. For many of us, when we went into this worldwide spring season, we had no idea COVID-19 was even around. We didn't even know what it was. When they told us to go home because we weren't real sure about how it was, the, how it was um, passed, we were all happy about it, figured we'd be out a week or two and then we'd be back to work. Well, a month later, here we are, still working from home. Now we're wearing masks and we're wearing gloves and we have this new normal that we call it. And some people want to give up, but today's sermon is about keeping us in a place of understanding who God is even in the midst of it all. And the sermon title is, Don't Give Up Now. Hmm. Many of us have never seen a time such as this. Many of us have never ever considered even thinking about the things that we're going through now. No one ever thought I'd have to go to Safeway at 6 o'clock in the morning and hope they had some toilet paper and a paper towel. Come on, man. No one ever thought we would be where we are. Many of us who are Christians who know anything about the book of Revelation figured we'd be gone by the time this kind of stuff rolled out. We would be already in heaven awaiting our, uh, our, our judgment, but we wouldn't be here dealing with all of this. I had a conversation with a friend of mine recently, and she was saying, Anita, that, it's not possible. We can't be going through this. We're saved. And I said, who says? Who says that we can't go through this? Who says that this is not a wake-up call for the church? Because we've been around people who are unsaved for so long, and we haven't even tried to talk to them about Jesus. Who says this is not a wake-up call for us? Ah. Come on now. And so now here we are. We stand here, and a lot of us, had things God had told us to do, and we kept saying we didn't have time for it. Well, now you do. 
Yeah. And you say, well, I wanted to do it this way, and I wanted to do it that way, and I wanted to do it the other way. The children of Israel didn't want to go back into captivity. They had already in captivity in Egypt. Those people had died off. They had gone through other captivities. Those people had died off. And now here they were about to go into captivity in Babylon. They didn't want to do it. But we don't get to say how God brings us to the place where he needs us to be. Amen. So here we are. And then Jeremiah, he is buying a field from a, his cousin. Now, in the normal circumstances, because you are about to go into captivity and Jeremiah was already arrested and in the courts with the guards, no one would buy a field in a land that you know is about to be overrun with your enemy. But when God sets us up to do something new, in our spring season, Come on. there is no way for us to know or understand how he's going to do that. Our goal is simple. Obey. Jeremiah got the word from God, and so when his cousin came, he obeyed the word. He bought the property. He bought the land. He bought what he was supposed to have. He bought it knowing that God had already told him to get it. I'm sure his cousin, Hammermill, walked away thinking he had gotten one over on his cousin, Jeremiah. But really, God had gotten one over on Hammermill. Because God wanted the property in Jeremiah's hands, not in his hands. Because God had already intended for the people of Israel to back and buy land and buy property, plant vineyards, plant crops. And being that Jeremiah was from the family he was from, it was probably really good property to have. He had dealt with God before, and Jeremiah understood and knew that when God tells us to do stuff, he doesn't make sure that it makes sense. He makes sure that what he says. And so if we are willing to be obedient, the blessing is going to come after the season. Is going to come in our harvest season. Ah. Come on now. So now here we are in our spring season, us, you and me, in the spring season that was started by COVID-19. We are learning how to do new things. We're learning how to wear masks and not suffocate ourselves. I hate those things, but they gotta ha I got to have them. We're learning, learning how to wear gloves. We're learning how to come in the house and take the Clorox wipes, wipe down, wash our take care of our glasses so that nothing comes in the house with us. We are learning how to be at home and take care of our children. We are learning how to teach our children while we're trying to telework. Oh my God. We are learning that teachers are important, much more important than many of us thought they were. We are learning that daycare providers are important, much more important than many people thought they were. Doctors, nurses, respiratory therapists, um, uh, the people who draw blood, all of those people are important. Um, the, the people at the dry cleaners, the people at the beauty supply house, our beauticians, people that we looked at and didn't see, we understand now just how important they are. And so when we be and so when we begin this newness, my hope is that we begin to treat people better love people more and consider the necessity of embracing people if not physically then mentally and emotionally because we now understand how much we need them this pandemic has brought us to a place where many people want to just throw in the towel but i'm here today to tell you this is not the time to give up and this is not the first time the United States has gone through a pandemic. In 1918, there was a flu pandemic called the Spanish flu. It went from 1918 to December of, 20, of 1920, which means it went on for two years. It infested 500 million people, which was about the world's population at the time. The death toll was between 17 million and 50 million. What made it so deadly? It destroyed the inner lining of the respiratory system. Sound familiar? That this pandemic affected about a quarter of the population. So let's flip that script. 
the news reports always tell us how many people have died and what's going on and the worst thing they could possibly tell us. And a part of that is so that we'll start doing what we're supposed to do. But if a quarter of the population died, that means three quarters didn't die. Hmm. That means that three quarters of the population God spared. That means three quarters of the population was not affected. So the world kept spinning, people kept living, lives kept moving, and there was no reason for the people to give up. Well. Then you have what we know as the bubonic plague or what we call Black Death. It happened to be one of the most devastating pandemics in world history. It took out 75 to 200 million people in Asia and mm -hmm. Europe between the years of 1347 and 1351. Black Death was so dramatic, we made up a song about it. And we used to dance around holding hands, ring around the rosy, pocket full of posies, ashes, ashes, y'all fall down. And that song came about because the disease was passed by fleas. So in the middle of the flea bite, there was a thing that looked like a rose, and there was a round circle that went around it, and that was the ring around the rosies. Pocket full of posies was people walked around with flowers in their pockets so they could sniff them because the stench of death was all around. Ashes, ashes came from ashes to ashes, dust to dust, and we all fall down came from people were dying. We made up a song and they, the children danced to it and they played a game to it. It was estimated that the bubonic plague killed 30 to 60% of Europe's population. 30 to 60%. Okay, let's make that on a positive note. That means that 40 to 70% of Europe's population didn't die. Ah, that meant that life went on even in the midst of that horrible epidemic. Come on. Babies kept being born, well, inventions were created, uh -huh. businesses kept moving, there yes. was no reason for people to give up, and there's no reason for you and I to give up now. Well, we have seen the swine flu, the Hong Kong flu, H1N1, the Great Plague of London, the Great Depression, HIV, AIDS, 9-11, slavery, Reconstruction period, Jim Crow, the Civil Rights era, mm. and we are still here. Uh -huh. And this is no time for us to give up now. There have been wars, the War of, eight, of 1812, World War I and World War II, the Spanish-American War, the, Europe, the uh, Korean conflict, Vietnam, the Iraq War. But we are still here, and this is no time for us to give up now. Come on now. We are still mm. standing. We are still innovating. We are still growing. We are still progressing. Why? Because the same God that took care of the children of Israel as they were about to go into Babylon is the same God that takes care of you and I. Same God. He is still enthroned in heaven. He is still sits high and looks low and he is still mindful of his creation. He is still on our side. He still takes care of us. He's still watching over come us. He is on, still protecting on. us. He is still our refuge and our strength. He is our very present help in the time of trouble. God has brought mankind through all kinds of things. And we are still here. This is not a time for us to give up now. Oh, I know. We listen to the news. We listen to too much news. Well, If you like me, I work for FEMA, so I'm getting stuff all the time about the COVID virus, COVID-19. But I want I got some figures and I began to look at them. And the Lord said to me, I want you to tell the truth about the numbers. So here's one truth. The U.S. is experiencing 11.24 for every one people who contract the COVID-19 virus. That means that 99,988 people who contract it won't die. Mm. Let me say that again. Out of the 100,000 people that will contract the virus, 99,988 people won't die. Nobody wants to get the virus. Mm -mm. Nobody wants to have anybody in their family or anybody they know to have the virus. Nope. But when you listen to the news, all they can tell you about is the worst of the worst. Now, I don't want you going out here talking about first lady said I probably won't die. <laughs> so I don't have to wear a mask. I'm just going to trust Jesus. Nope. First lady didn't say that. Because first lady wears gloves. First lady wears masks. 
First lady covers up. First lady sprays down her doorknobs. I do everything the CDC tells us to do. Because the Bible teaches us we are to be obedient to those over us in a thing. And the CDC, Dr. Fauci, and others are in authority over us. And if they say wear a mask when you go out the house, I slip my little mask on and be glad when I can get out of it. So don't say, first lady, you have to. Yes, you do. But in the midst of all of this, we are learning new things. We are learning that the God we serve is still sovereign. We are learning in a whole new way that he is going to take care of us. And as Paul said in Hebrews, that he will never leave us nor forsake us. So what are you and I doing in this time that God has told us to do? See, Jeremiah was obedient even when it didn't look like there was any reason to be obedient. God has told all of us to do something. And you say, well, first lady, I can't go outside the house. I can't do this. I can't do that. But you can prepare. See, there's one thing about the spring season. The spring season is a time when you make preparation. You have to dig holes. You've got to plant new flowers. Help You've got to assess your soil. You've got to figure out whether or not something died and if you need to remove it or if it's still just in a dormant state. You've got to figure out what's going on so that you can make sure that as you go into your next season, you've prepared in your spring season. Come on now. I lost six roses over the winter season. You, for those of you who know I grow roses, I lost six I had to order roses. I left them in place until my new roses came in yesterday. Pastor went out and began to dig the holes because we have this thing. If he digs the holes, I'll plant the roses. Help us, Lord. But I had six roses, and I, that's the most I think I've ever had that have died in one winter. Normally, I have none. But this year, because the summer was so hot and the winter was so mild, I didn't have enough water moisten the soil to get to the roots to deal with the roses in such a way that I could give through. So six roses died, passed away out and started digging holes, and they're not cute holes, they are deep holes. They need to be four feet or so, three to four feet, so that the rose can go down deep because roses like deep soil and they need to be able to branch out. You say, first, like, what does that have to do with anything? When God, the gardener, starts coming into our lives, in the midst of our spring seasons, he begins to assess us. Yes. Ah, he begins to look at us. He to look and see what's dead, what needs to be moved. He begins to start planning new things. He begins to start move taking us new ways. He begins to start digging out the dead stuff and planting new stuff. We need to make sure that we are fully watered with the water of life. We need to make sure that we are in the word because Jesus Christ is the word and he is the water of life. We need to make sure that the seeds God has planted in us, the things he's told us to do, the things that are important for him in our lives are fully watered by the word so that we can grow and bloom in due season. We do not give up now. How many of us have begun to prepare? How many of us have begun to move? You may not like technology, but technology may be the only way you can do the ministry you want to do. You may not want to do things the way you look like this is, not, this is not the way I'm used to. Used to is done. We are now in a new season. What are you willing to do to obey God? Jeremiah was willing to spend his money to buy a field in a place where he wasn't and that he might never get back to just to obey God. What are you and what am I willing to, do to obey God? No matter what you decide to do, just know this. This is not the time nor the place to give up. This is not the time nor the place to look at destiny and walk away from it. This is not the time nor the place to wave the white flag of surrender. This is the time, this is the place where you stand your ground and say, I will not give up now. May God bless you. Let us pray. 
Father God, right now, in the name of Jesus, we ask that you strengthen us on every side so that we do not give up now. We ask, Lord God, that you help us put the coronavirus in proper perspective, that it is beneath you. It is lower than you. You control it. It does not control you. That we are more than able, more than equipped to do everything you've told us to do. And you will make sure that it goes, that it happens the way you have determined it will happen. We will give you all the honor, all the glory, and all the praise. In the matchless name of Jesus, we pray. Praise the Lord. We just thank you um, for the sermon this morning. Thank you for the teaching. Amen. Amen. That was truly a, a great teaching that she gave us this morning. And, and God is good and, and worthy to be praised. And we're just so very thankful um, for, uh, for that word this morning. We are thankful that God continues to bless covering. Amen. Um, in, this, in this time uh, that so much is going on. I got you. That so much is going on that um, we just continue to do what God has called us to do. Uh, and, uh, and God is going to bless us and keep us and cover us uh, and, and, um, and, and be with us in this time. But uh, as the sermon in the name of Jesus. And so, uh, and so someone said, well, do we have to pay uh, tithes on our stimulus text? So the question is, as this is a question I got a long time ago from, from Tony Evans. Um, and y'all, for many of y'all are familiar with, with uh, Tony Evans. The question is, is do you want to be blessed on what God has allowed you to receive? And so that is that is your question. That's right now. So I'm going to give you a little bit of time uh, to, to, to write your check. Uh, there are various ways that you can do it. You can write it. We can pay electronically. So we're going to give you one minute to do that. Go. Connected. S A N S U M G S M G nine five zero U. Mobile device not found. Ready to share. Hello. Hello. We're still here. Hello. We're still here. Just hold on. <laughs> yes. We can't hear you on Zoom. Okay. Thanks, Carlene. I thought it was just me. Uh -huh. No, it went to the She was just dead right when she started praying. Yeah, we're, yeah. we're back. Hello? Okay. Oh, you good. Okay, we're here. Okay. We're here. Facebook went out too. I know Facebook. I don't know what happened on Facebook. But it came back, right? <laughs> yeah. Zoom went out too. Yeah, everything went out. So. Oh, okay. Yeah, but we're back. Uh, to God be the glory. We're dealing with uh, multiple technologies here. Just trying to do the juggle has been uh, interesting today. Uh, so, so let's pray. I want to pray over the offering today. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we want to give you glory and honor and praise. And thank you, Lord God, for, for all that you have allowed us to do. We thank you, Lord God, because you're an awesome God and there's none like you. So please continue to be with us, Lord God, as we go forward to do great things for the kingdom of God. We will give you all the glory and all the honor and all the praise. This is our prayer in the awesome name of Jesus we pray and say amen. 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 All right. So um, we're getting ready to come to, to the end. Um, so like, as I said earlier, there's, I want to be able to, to bless some of the, the, the people who are working at the rehabilitation centers. We used to call them nursing homes and they were convalescent homes and then rehabilitation centers. So I want to be able to bless them in some way. So I wanted to do a, a special offering that if we could, if everyone could sacrifice like ten dollars, that we could give, and, and I would like to uh, collect enough money that we could go to the the two homes that have our, the most people that we have uh, in it, um, and just in, in, buy, buy a meal, which is Heritage Harbor, that's in Annapolis, and South River uh, in um, in Edmond, uh, and so uh, and, and and so uh, we just ask that. Uh, if you want to do that, then on your check, just put um, 
C19 on it. C19, they will know that $10 out of what you're giving us will go toward, um, uh, will go toward this special fund that we're going to bless them and just let them know that the, the church stands behind them. As I said earlier, you'll be getting some, some checks, uh, some uh, letters to talk about this and get an idea. So if you have any other ideas of who we can bless, how we can bless them, please let me know. I mean, we're looking for innovative ideas. We can't come together as a church, but we can't. That does not mean that as a church, we can't bless those. And we know that people are seriously going through. So we want to make sure um, that we do that. Again, I wanted to thank everyone for your continued financial support of our churches. Uh, it is needed even at this time. And we thank you so very much for continuing to give and going out of your way for many of you to make sure that um, the checks get to the church, um, that the payments are being made. So we just ask that you would just continue to do that um, and uh, to God be the glory uh, for doing that. We will continue to have a call for prayer on Wednesday at 7 p.m. So um, so please uh, join us. Have other people join us Wednesday at 7 p.m. It's only a 30-minute call. Uh, and we do prayer. We do a little bit of a, a Bible study. Uh, but we want to be able to get together and, um, and, and lift up. The, the, the word, world needs prayer right now. So we want to make sure that we're able to do that. For the men, we're going to go back and on Thursday at 7 p.m., the men. So y'all tell somebody now. For the men, Thursday at 7 p.m., we're going to do our FMO uh, on Zoom. So it will be this number, the same number. We'll be getting the information out. But if you're on today, tell somebody and give them this number. That at 7 p.m., the men will get together for, for the FMO. And it's a check-in session. We haven't been together for a long time. I want to see how the, how the brothers are doing with all this that is going on. Uh, also, we got news uh, yesterday that... Uh, there's going to be another food distribution. Um, it's scheduled right now for May the 8th, which is a Friday. So that's going to be interesting. Uh, but we'll be getting you more information. We'll be getting our committee, committee together again so we can get times and get everything together. Um, but I think it's really important that we are able uh, to give food uh, to those who are in need. You've seen the various food distributions on the news. If you watched any kind of news, um, there's all kind of food distributions that are going on. Lines and lines because people don't have um, food right now. And it's getting worse as time goes on and they've been out of work for a while. And so we have to make sure that um, people do have food. Um, First Lady is going to be doing a Bible study next Sunday after service, after this service. So for everybody who was a part of our Bible, her Bible study or not, um, after our service on next Sunday, starting about probably 11 o'clock, uh, next Sunday, there will be a, a Bible study The First Lady will be doing on Zoom. It, it would be great if you had Zoom because she may have some slides and different things like that. So, yeah. so please uh, please join us. Also, um, the, the news is that we're going to have a, a drive through baby pantry on Wednesday from 4 to 6 p.m. So from 4 to 6 p.m., the needs of those who have children, and we have a lot of things in our pantry that will be open. It will be a drive through We'll keep social distancing. But if you know anyone who has children who has a need, uh, please let them know that there will be the, the drive through on Wednesday at 6 p.m. Amen? First Lady has, has something? Uh, in addition uh, to the Bible study that's going to happen next Sunday after service, it's about an hour, so it'll be from like 11 to noon. Um, I'm starting a Bible study on called Walk in Your Season. The subtitle is Successful People Know What Time It Is. And um, we are. St I'm starting it on Tuesday of this week, the 21st. Um, it's going to be from 7 to 8.30. It's going to be on Zoom. Um... You can, if you're on, you can go to my webpage, uh, www.anitawomble.com and click on, you'll see it, Walk in Your Season, four-week course, and register and get the information you need about the workbook and, and about the actual book. Um, it's going to only be for four weeks. It's, only, it's going to be um, interactive, uh, and it's not going to be what I'm going to teach on Sundays. Two different things. Okay, so um, if you are interested, go to my webpage, anitawomble.com, click on Walk in Your Season, and the information will be there. If you still have other questions, you can give me a call, or you can shoot me an email. All right? Love you. Thank you so very much, First Lady. As, as, we, learned, as we learned today, um, First Lady is indeed a teacher. Amen. And uh, we learned 
a whole lot. How many of y'all knew about Ring Around the Rosie, a pocket full of posy? I didn't have a clue. I thought... <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, hey I, you know, I just, I was just, I was just, uh, you didn't know what it was. I know that's right. I know that's right. But God is good now, now, and now we know. So I don't know, maybe our kids will be singing the song. I don't know. Um, 17, 18, 19, COVID. I don't know. Uh, help me, Jesus. But anyway, but God is good. So thank you. Thank you all so very much. Um, sorry about the uh, technology challenges we had today. I don't know what happened with Facebook Live. Um, uh, the, it went out and then um, uh, on uh, on Zoom, that was probably my fault because I had like three devices going on. I'm trying to turn things on, turn, turn things off. But God is good all the time. But I thank you all for hanging in there with us. Uh, God is good. If you have uh, any comments, you know, if you're on Facebook Live, uh, shoot them on Facebook Live. Uh, if not, y'all have my text number. Text text number and everything, but, but, but uh, you know, we're just going to continue to lift up the name of Jesus, um, and, and I want to reiterate uh, what First Lady said, and, and I'm going to be uh, ramping up this week. I, I always take the week after Easter to sort of uh, uh, recharge my batteries, but I'm going to be ramping up to do some, some new and different things uh, in the community and in the church um, as, we, as we move forward. We know what we're going to do. We will probably not be in our churches until sometime in June. I hear the moan. I know. But that's, that's the reality because uh, we had a big meeting um, yesterday and thank uh, Sister Yvonne for being a part of that meeting as well um, with the, the, the bishop and all of the folks up in um, Baltimore and they're going to follow the direction of, of Governor Hogan. Uh, and so, you know, they're going to keep pushing this thing back because we want to be safe. Amen. That's right. Amen. I know that there's a lot of talk about opening things up, but uh, we really want to be safe because we don't want... Um, we have a lot of people who are vulnerable, yes. uh, and so we want to make sure that everybody is safe, and so whatever we, we can do. Um, there's going to be a few surprises coming up in the week to come, I guarantee you that, so I'll be doing some, some new and different things just to, just to keep my mind active, um, but God, uh -oh. is, <laughs> God is good all of the time. Yeah. So I, I, I thank everybody. Y'all have a blessed day, amen, uh, and uh, to God be the glory for the great things that he has done. Let's pray as we leave. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we give you glory and honor and praise. You are the awesome God, and there is none like you. Please, Lord God, continue to be with us, Lord God. Be with our churches, Lord God. There's St. Matthew's, there's Solace, but there's more than just these churches that are represented here yes. on, on this, on this uh, telecast, Lord God. We ask that you would bless everybody, bless everyone's church. Lord God, I ask a special blessing for our sick and our shut-in yes. in the name of Jesus, and a special blessing mm, for those who are in the convalescent homes, Lord God, because yes, so God. much is going on in the convalescent homes. We ask that you, for your blessing and your covering for all of those, Heavenly Father, that you would just continue them up. Lord God, may we be safe in the name of Jesus. May we be obedient to do those things that we've been called to do, Lord God, that we'd have gloves and we will have masks and we will um, keep social distancing, Heavenly Father, and, and to God be the glory. Uh, help us, Lord God, that we will be able to reach out and call those, Heavenly Father, who are in our community, those, Lord God, who are the vulnerable, those, Lord God, are sick, are shut in, our older people, even our younger people who we know are troubled at this time. For those who have lost their jobs in the name of Jesus, Lord yes, God, I yes, ask that yes. you would please be with them. Lord God, if, it, if, if we can help them and bless them, show us how. Show us the way, O oh God, in the yes. name of Jesus, and we will give you the glory and the honor and the praise. And now to him who is able. To do exceedingly and abundantly more than we ask, think, or imagine because of the power of God that is at work within us. To the only Lord, our Savior, be glory, majesty, and authority now and forevermore. And let the church say, Amen. 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 Y'all have a blessed day, all right? God bless you. Love you. Beautiful job, Miss Wilma. Beautiful job. Thank you.